CNN medical analyst Dr. Jorge Rodriguez joins me now live from Los Angeles. I want to talk more about all of this. Doctor, hi, lovely to see you again. Likewise. Uh, it's, really, it's, it's really quite surreal, isn't it, listening to our report, because it seems like there's such a contrast. Here in the U.S., vaccines are being distributed at record speed. Life looks like it's going to be going back to normal, some sort of normal, sooner rather than later. And then we have Europe. You heard Jim Bitterman there talking about France. I mean, people there facing this massive wave. Why the discrepancy here? Well, I think the discrepancy, A, is the fact that Europe has not had the same velocity in distributing vaccines as the U.S. or other countries have had. I think we need to really put our, wrap our head around the fact that, you know, this may never, or at least in the near future, not go to any degree of normalcy until the whole world is vaccinated and the whole world needs to be doing that at the same time. So we're going to have what's been stated many times, sort of a whack-a-mole uh, type of treating this. It's going to flare up in one place um, or another, even the United States. And uh, I think there's a fallacy going around that just because we're going to get vaccinated, everything here is going to be okay. There is a whole other world that comes to the U.S. and we go there. And until everybody is at the same level playing field, we're going to have these, these uptakes throughout the world. And a lot of this also might have to do with uh, various variants. Uh, we're hearing of a strong resurgence of, of COVID in Canada as well, connected to variants. I mean, some are saying this could lead to a third wave there that's worse than the first two. Absolutely, they're saying that. I think that they've found the variants in all 10 provinces of Canada. Mm -hmm. And even though overall the absolute number of the cases they have is still small in comparison to the U.S., it definitely is on the uptake. Now, one thing that I always want to drive home is the fact that variants happen when people get infected. The virus cannot replicate by itself in the air. It has to get into a human being. So even though, for example, a young person may think, oh, nothing's going to happen to me, you know, I'm, I'm going to get over this in, in no time. Well, what's probably happening is that they may cr be creating a variant that they're then going to spread and is going to become a dominant dangerous variant. So everybody has to not get infected. So, yeah, the variants are everywhere. In some states in the U.S., it's up to 40 percent or more of, of the infections that are happening. So we are at a race against the variant with vaccinations. But don't think that's the only thing. We still have to wear our masks, wash our hands um, and have, you know, sort of logical distance between people. Here in Georgia and many other places across the U.S., uh, you can get a vaccine if you're 16 and older. How much longer will it be until younger children, 12-year-olds, 13-year-olds, 14-year-olds, uh, will get the vaccine? Because well, that will really make an impact, won't it, on, on school life? It will make an impact on everything. A lot of... Uh scientists think that we're never going to reach herd immunity until we start vaccinating younger people. I think Dr. Fauci stated that he thinks in the fall teenagers are going to be able to get vaccinated. Pfizer has now started rolling out a study on much younger um, humans, uh, even toddlers at the age of six and seven, to so see what dose is right for them. It's estimated that in the early part of 2022, children will be able to be vaccinated, but we want to make sure that it's safe and parents should not fear this because even though children are not dying at the same rate, they're still getting some very long-term complications from the COVID virus. So end of this year for most teenagers, early next year uh, for younger children. Okay, that's good to know if you live in the U.S. Um, I just want to go back to the issue of variants, and you talked about sort of unchecked um, infections creating essentially a petri dish within our bodies to create these new variants. Uh, let's look at Brazil. How dangerous is what's happening in Brazil for, for global health? It's, it's very dangerous. Um, yeah. Brazil yeah. is probably the most dangerous area right now in the world. They are out of control with, with their... Um, amount of, of COVID and, and they've had some remote areas in the Amazon that they thought people had reached perhaps herd immunity because 70% of the population in these remote areas had gotten infected and unfortunately they got reinfected because of variants. So listen, we're in one big village and we call it Earth. As long as there is one area that still is out of control and on fire, we are all in danger, which is we're not just about getting the U.S. vaccinated. After we do this, or maybe while we do this, a lot of the first world countries really need to step up and, and help places like 
Africa and certain places of South America and underdeveloped countries uh, because it's for not only their good but for everyone's good that people get vaccinated. Dr. Jorge Rodriguez, always good to speak to you, uh, get Likewise. your opinion. Thanks so much. Have a wonderful weekend. Likewise.